Hey everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing and today I want to talk about another hot zone. This hot zone, I'm going to be talking about fishing oyster reefs. Okay, now why do you fish an oyster reef? The predator fish will stack up around these reefs. They will be chasing bait. The bait feel more safe, secure. They will get in there and try to lose some of the predator, predator fish that are chasing them, trying to pounce on them, trying to eat them. So you will come across quite a few fish around these reefs. Reds, trout, even flounder will be hanging around these reefs. Sometimes you catch a fish and you'll see that they have a lot of pink or red on them. Then that's a telltale sign that they have been hanging around some of these reefs and just going kamikaze trying to chase these baits and banging themselves up. The first type of reef I want to talk about is submerged oyster reefs. Now there's a few ways how you can locate these oyster reefs. The first way is by using Google Maps. Another way is using hook and line. Now I've used these I've used these maps for several years. This is an older version, but it still comes in very useful and very handy. There's a lot of good great information you can get, especially if you get the wade shore and kayaking version. A lot of great information out there. And another way is while you're on the water, you can simply fill it. When you're swimming your lure, bouncing your lure on bottom, swimming your lure on bottom, you will feel what we call sticky. Where your lure kind of gets stuck, kind of grabs the ground a little bit. It's not really mud. It's more hard, rock filling. Well, typically that's because there's oysters submerged in the water. And that's a great sign that there's a lot of fish around. All right, so we're going to switch over to the PC here. And I just want to show you from Google Earth, Google Maps, an oyster reef from the satellite image that is submerged and talk to you real quick how you identify them and how you fish them. You can see this darker area right here. This is an oyster reef. And you, you will find these all over any anytime you have a bottle, body of water, typically salt water. Now the first way I'm going to talk about fishing over these oyster reefs is just simply casting and swimming your lure back to you. Gently touching the tops of these oysters as you skip them across. Now you can go with a weedless hook such as this. You can go with your more standard typical jig head but this barb, this hook is going to catch very easy. So. If I know I'm going to target some oysters, a lot of times I will switch up and go weedless. It just helps. It just helps from getting your line from being, it helps from keeping your line from getting stuck and snagging a lot of those rocks or oysters. But I will simply cast over and just swim it back, cast over and swim it back. Now, if I can go along the top of these oysters and drift, let's say the wind is Let's say the wind is coming this way. The wind is blowing me across this way. I will set up here and let it carry me across. Now as it's carrying me across these oysters, I will cast and swim my lure back to me, cast and swim my lure back to me. And then as I continue to move, I will continue to cast and swim my lure back, cast and swim my lure back, cast and swim my lure back. Now that is drift fishing. 
typically that's something that you work in a grid you will cover this area cast and then I will come back here again set up here again let the wind carry me back across casting the whole time now if you're going in this direction you want to cast in that same direction you don't want to cast behind you because pretty pretty obvious reasons you don't want to catch an oyster grab an oyster get your hook stuck your jig head stuck and then you have to interrupt your drift and go back to retrieve your jig head or worse break off so if you stay with the flow of the wind and cast ahead of you you and if you do get stuck you can just simply pull your jig head out pull your hook out as you pass that spot that you got hung up on but another way you can fish this area these type of areas that are submerged you can fish them with a top water very great to fish with top water also if it's deep enough if you have enough coverage between the tops the uh, top of the water and the oyster you can also fish it with something like this tossing a cork obviously if it's only about a foot you don't typically you don't want a two foot leader you can just go something a little shorter uh, leader line but like I said you can fish with a standard jig head you can fish them um, with a submerged you can fish them um, with a wee list jig head in this instance you can put live bait shrimp mullet shad croaker soak a croaker on a cork also like throwing a voodoo shrimp they also make a voodoo shrimp that's already weedless this is very helpful you can throw it on your cork or you can simply just cast over the lure over the oyster and if you're not getting any bites you want to just spice things up a little bit go with go with some scent or you can even put a chatter weight on now if you simply want to anchor here and cast then I would fan cast the whole area and then you can move and then fan cast the whole area again and then move and fan cast the whole area again just work the area slow I would also target the outside air edges of the oyster reef and if you notice any deep spots or like where you have an area where there is no reef it's always good to target those areas as well because the fish will the predator fish will lay in wait here chasing bait all around so these are also good areas to target if you have any drop off or intersections again those are that's that's two hot zones in one area so that's an extreme hot zone for you an extreme high probable area where you're going to catch some fish here's a few clips of me fishing a submerged oyster reef this first one is via boat and the second one is in my kayak with the cork. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a solid little 15. Oh, that's nice. Okay, keep your line out, bro. I got it. Okay, they're over here. Okay. Well, that's a solid little 15 right there. Did you catch one? That goat. Goat, penny goat. Solid. See that? See that? Billy Ray caught on a penny goat, and he gave me not a penny goat. See that? You see that? That's a setup. Put that out there. He set me up. Put that out there. He said long short shoes head. He hit. He set me up. Set me up. Set me up. Now what we're doing right here is we're drifting. We have the wind to our back, and we're allowing it to push the boat. Um, you can also do this from a kayak, but you allow it to push you over. Off tr off uh, surface of water an area and what we're doing is that we are just simply bouncing either bouncing it on the bottom or swimming the lure back to yourself you can even uh, jerk and reel uh, it just depends on what type of lure you're using but this gives you the ability to cover a lot of water and oh, and fish the um, fish drop-offs and oyster reefs in this case we're fishing uh, over some oysters Fish on. <clears throat> Trying to go to my anchor. 
Ah! Oh, get out of my anchor. Oh, he almost did. He went under it. Come on. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. Where's it a muscle you in? How's that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the first part of the video of fishing the hot zone, the oyster reefs, fishing those submerged oysters. Stay tuned. Keep an eye out for the next video where I will be talking about fishing, fishing some of those tucked in oyster reefs, some of those grass lined oyster reefs, and part three where I'll be talking about fishing those freestanding, those standalone, those exposed oyster reefs when that water level drops down and shows you a real defined area where those oysters are located. But thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Till next time, hopefully you catch me hooking up. Thanks.